Dear students, in this module, I'm going to elaborate on the importance of the protein folding problem. The proteins, as I mentioned, were folding spontaneously. So without any major external stimulus, they simply folded on to themselves and achieved a minimum free energy state. So this in itself is amazing because how do the proteins they arrive at the decision to adopt a specific structure. So these are the questions which we will investigate later. But for now, we will limit ourselves to the importance of the folding paradigm. So the fundamental reason why proteins fold is that they have to undertake various functions within the cell. Now their folded forms, they assist the proteins to undertake those functions. So putting it in another way, if the protein was not folded properly, then it will fail to perform its function that was expected from it within the cell. So these dysregulated protein structures or the misfolded protein structures as they are called they lead to diseases they give rise to anomalies within the biological systems and the biological system can no longer complete its function so this can in effect be sourced from the dysregulation of the protein structure or a misfolding of the protein if you understand the protein fold properly and how this process goes, then it can help you significantly in designing specific drugs. For instance, if you knew how protein A is folded and that you also found out that in disease D, protein A is misfolded, then you can go back and actually try to fold protein A properly and hence remove the disease so therefore in order to do this you can design a drug based on the misfolded protein structure a so this is how the protein folding can also help you in designing drug molecules as i just mentioned that if a protein is mal uh, formed and mal structured and misfolded then it can lead to a lot of anomalies at the cellular level, at the cellular functions. More so, in order to study all of these misfolded structures, you cannot possibly have experimental evidences for all of them. So computational algorithms are very important in helping you to overcome this hurdle. So in order to study protein folding and the problems and the anomalies associated with protein folding, you can use a lot of computational tools and computational folding algorithms. So how do we begin the process of computational analysis of protein folding? Given that it's such an important problem and that if we are going to address it, we have to base our uh, software on the experimental data. So data coming out from experiments is taken up and the protein structures are formed and once you have a protein structure from experimental data then you can perturb it, you can create its variations and then try to see how it functions while docking with another protein or a drug molecule and so on and so forth. So we have to collect all of these clues and ex evidences from the experimental data and we utilize them towards uh, analyzing known as well as unknown structures. So the unknown structures are really helpful for determining any novel proteins. So novel proteins are those proteins which are hitherto unknown and therefore can enhance our understanding of the biological processes occurring within the cells. So in conclusion, so given computational algorithms and procedures, we can actually fold a protein 
given its amino acid sequence and try to see the outcome from the folding process and then you can uh, take that folded protein and study its role in disease, in drugs and so on and so forth. So all of this put together can give you a very powerful insight into the mechanisms of dysregulation occurring in diseases such as diabetes, cancer, Alzheimer's and so on and so forth. So therefore this topic is very important and will be the focus of our attention.